to what managers of B2B Marketing should know about website conversion. Uh, we're so glad that you've joined us today on this webinar. And my name is Marguerite Inska, one of the presenters in this uh, uh, session. And I'm an inbound marketing strategist. I work with people on how to generate leads uh, using their website. And I would like to also introduce Andrew. Hey everyone, I'm here on behalf of Clark Incorporated. Uh, I'm really excited about being able to talk about websites today and hope everyone learns some new and useful information. Cool. Well, let, uh, we're going to share just a little bit about uh, information about us, just background of who we are, where we're coming from, and then we're going to dive right into what we have planned. So uh, my agency, we launch you, we relaunch your website uh, to make it a lead generation machine. And our B2B inbound marketing agency, meaning that we focus on helping B2B companies uh, with their online presence. And uh, that's just keeping it short and quick. Here you go, Andrew. All right. Well, my name is Andrew Osborne, and with Clark Incorporated, which is a marketing media services provider. That means we're like a marketing hub through which you can get help with any aspect of your marketing. We help businesses with website design and development, mobile and tablet app development, so as well as uh, mobile web marketing. And we do a lot of traditional printed and mailed marketing as well. My precise role in the company is uh, layout design and development. So we have partnered together on, I think this is our fifth webinar or fourth, fourth or fifth webinar together uh, just because we have really complementary skills of knowledge and services and we just find this is really fun to do. So that's why we do it. And uh, this is what's on the lineup for this session. We're going to talk about what kind of content needs to be on a website in order to enable conversion. And since we're, this is just specifically B2B websites, that's what we're focusing on. Uh, which is a little, it's similar to B2C, but uh, we'll certainly talk about the, the difference between the two. And then what is a conversion path that you need on the website to get people to move from one stage to the next? How do you nurture the lead that you get from your website? Just a reminder of a follow-up, because it's a whole, cool, yeah, it's a whole system, right? You have to have in place. And then we'll look at some example websites, and we'll look at your website. And uh, certainly if you can't use a way to verbally communicate. Maybe the phone system is bad or something like that. We can always use chat. Use chat anytime to communicate with us. Any questions, we are happy to help. This is a small session. We had a bigger one last on Tuesday. So uh, this is fun and cozy and get to know each other kind of stuff. So uh, all right, let's start off. In business to business kinds of companies, what we have are services and products that are typically high ticket. They cost a lot of money. Typically, they are long-term relationships that are ongoing, and so trust is very important. So we don't just jump into a B2B relationship to do business it is, like we might as a consumer for buying a product or a consumer-based service. There's a lot more research and discussion that takes place before that happens. And uh, buying cycles can go pretty long, too. They can extend uh, up to a year sometimes. Uh, uh, 30 days is pretty short, but it's not unusual to go up to a year. So that okay. changes well, the whole I thing. I'm in the process of, of changing my email setup. So. And uh, marketing and sales, therefore, must be helpful. It has to be relational, and it has to be transparent. And transparency can have a, and helpfulness can have a lot to do with your website. And even your website can be relational. Uh, based on the type of content you put on there. So I like this little quote right down here at the bottom. Buyers are 50 to 60% of their way through a buying cycle before they contact you. If you think about the buyer's journey before you start making dramatic changes to your website, you're going to end up putting up a product that works a lot better. Now, uh, do you have anything to add to this, Andrew, maybe in terms of a website, which you look for in terms of navigation that would help support all of this? Well, uh I have a comment about that 50, 60 percent figure. Um, the flip side of that is people who investigate you without buying never contact you at all, naturally. They make up their mind about their business based on what they can find out on their own, usually on your website. If your content and your website needs explaining or is inadequate, they'll never come to you to ask for clarification or more detail. They'll just go elsewhere. Excellent point. 
very good. And if they can't find it on your website, even if the stuff is there, um, that can cause a problem too. Maybe the text is too dense to read. Maybe it's menu driven instead of uh, calls to action and the flow that you know sense of, makes sense for who that buyer is in their journey. And you know, a lot of websites have B2B relationships and B2C, so they're trying to cater to both parties, which is fine. But if we don't help make that very easy for the visitor the first time they come, they might get turned off because they think, oh, well, they just help businesses. You know, they're not interested in me, the consumer, or vice versa. So good, good point. All right, so buying stages. This is something that we, I was just talking about, uh, the buyer's journey and the stages that they go through. And uh, there's three levels, and you see it's kind of like a funnel, you know, the big one at the top where everybody is kind of at an awareness level of some sort of challenge or problem, and then they move into consideration to uh, understand the scope of their issue and look at possibilities, and then a decision point uh, where they're really evaluating, am I going to go with plan A or plan B using this product or service or companies, you know, X, Y, Z, which then creates actually the sales opportunity because that's when you're negotiating what that uh, B2B relationship is going to look like. So we've got um, Joe Schmo up here at the top. He looks happy and friendly, probably easy to talk to. And he is seeking answers to challenges in his workplace. He knows there's problems. He's become aware of it. He's not sure what to do. He's trying to see if there's some sort of answer on the internet because that's where we go, right? And that helpful information can be put on your website as pertaining to who Joe is, your target market. And it brings him to your website. It's traffic to the website that's positive. It's quality traffic. Now, as Joe does more and more research or delves more into his challenges or the, as time goes on and it gets worse, they start considering uh, the need for something more than just basic information. Um, considering other resources or tools. And so they're forming their buying criteria. Is this to hire uh, you know, a training program? Is it to do online training? Is it to hire a consultant? Uh, when we offer information um, on our website that helps them in this consideration process, not only does it help qualify them as a lead for you, like they're reading it and they're self-qualifying, but it's also giving them good decision-making information so they can keep moving forward. And uh, that's what's important because people can get stuck sometimes in the journey if they don't see what they need. And if you're presenting that decision criteria as an industry expert or a thought leader, it definitely adds to the credibility of that business. And then finally, once they've decided this is my elephant, you know, problem, what it looks like, and uh, and I believe we're going to go this direction. Now I'm going to evaluate my options, consultant A or consultant B. And uh, this is where they really want to understand what are the services that are provided, and you know what are the costs, or you know estimate costs, you know approximately what's going to be expected of me. Now what's interesting is that we really want to be trying to talk with people in the decision stage. If you're looking at uh, internet-based um, marketing needs, uh, awareness and consideration, you can do a lot more through automation and uh, with your website content. But here, as you're transitioning to the decision stage, we want to start connecting with them personally. We should already have the lead intelligence to do that so that we can create a very powerful sales opportunity for them. So I just threw a lot of stuff out there. Uh, Andrew, what do you have to add? Well. I want to stress how important it is to keep these buying stages in mind when never producing really any kind of marketing material. What is appropriate for the awareness stage usually won't be the same as what someone in the decision stage needs. You need to make sure that what you produce is appropriate for the stage it's being delivered to, and you need to make sure that you deliver relevant content to every stage with the goal of moving people from one stage to the next deeper stage. You're absolutely right. Every marketing system should have this present in their offline marketing, their online marketing. We need to know where every, every piece of content and expense leads to somewhere in this funnel as we're moving people along. And a lot of people forget this stage, consideration. We're about you know, creating awareness, and then hopefully they'll choose us. And so this consideration stage is what can take a certain business in your marketing to another level that maybe their competitors don't have. Or if their competitors are already doing it and, you know, and we're not, 
then that puts us at a disadvantage. So examples of website content. Go ahead, Andrew. Tell us what these look like. All right. Well, first we have ongoing publishing. Um, as you can see there, how-tos, tips, strategies. These are things that you put up on your website very frequently. You probably would do multiples a week, maybe like a couple of blog posts a week or a blog posts in a slideshow, something like that. They are short, meant to be digested in just a few minutes, good for someone who is in the first stage, the awareness stage, to just start getting a little more educated, Stop figuring out, hey, okay, this person, this company is putting out this info, they know what they're talking about, and just the beginning, early stages. And then you've got moderate publishing, which may be more of a monthly thing, much less frequent, but more in-depth. You've got the webinars like we're doing right now. You can have uh, lengthier white papers or case studies, things that really offer greater value to people when you put in greater time to digest them, more for the consideration stage, they're looking a little deeper. They've started the relationship with you ongoing and now they're digging in and seeing what meat you've got and moving on down the funnel. And then you have static content that may be referred to at really any point in the cycle. That's a graph AQ, your general collateral, testimonials, the about stuff that tells them really quickly, you know, who you are, what you do, how you do it, why you do it, stuff for this, the general stuff that's not, needs to be put on the site but may not be frequently updated. Yeah, that's, that last part with the static content, that's where most people are pretty good with their websites, right? They have um, a description of their services and who they are, uh, maybe some of what they do. They might have um, a blog, uh, that they're operating, and that's about it. Uh, and so, I'm, as I said, you know, earlier, this middle of the funnel stuff is sort of missing. But I would also say, in static content, what I also see missing frequently is a description of processes, because it's not always just what it is that someone's going to do for me. Uh, you know, how I'm, I'm uh, what it is is I'm going to fix your challenge. You know, with a training program or with uh, um, or with a new product of some sort. But the process of how that happens is just as relevant to buyers. They want to know what that relationship is going to look like, what's going to be expected of me. And uh, that kind of meaty stuff helps people kind of buy into the whole process. If they like what they're reading, oh, this is how they work with uh, folks. And then I think I'd like to do that. And I can show you some examples of that today. It takes some thought, though, because some businesses, if they don't have a lot of structure, how they deliver their services, this is a little nebulous, but if you sit down and really think about what is a system that works best across the board generically, and of course you customize it per client or customer, but across the board, it gives people a sense of where you're coming from and what makes you different as a business. So breaking it down into conversion paths, because we've talked about content, but what actually makes people do something, right? Yeah. Uh, that it doesn't help you very much if someone just looks at your website, sees it as an electronic brochure, they just read a few things and then go away having never done anything, never having made any contact or giving you anything to give that you even know that they were there. That's where a call to action or kind of a CTA is for. It calls them to take some form of action, usually clicking on a link that takes them further down the conversion path. The call to action Generally, needs an intriguing graphic so it really catches the eye, gets some looks, say, you know, hey, what's this? A uh, text tailored to specifically to motivate them to take that action, click that button, or what, fill out that form, whatever it is. And it needs to be based on which buying stage they are in. You would phrase it differently if it's just awareness versus that the decision stage and maybe a little pushier and offer a little deeper commitment. Often a call to action will lead them to a landing page. Now, a landing page is a, a page set up on your site that's really just for one purpose, and that's to deliver like a content offer or a video, something like that, that you want to entice people to fill out the form that you have on the landing page. That gives you something to track. That gives you information about who's looking into your business things like that. So you're going to have like a video demoing what offer you have that they would use as kind of like bait, you know, fill out the form, you get the offer. And I plant quotes about it to it 
say, hey, this is a useful resource, you know, it's worth taking the time to fill out this form to get it, whatever it takes to motivate them to fill out that form. And then after they've filled out that form, it takes them to a thank you page where they have a button, they can finally download what it is you're offering, whatever the resource may be, and may even have a secondary call to action. And they've went through the path once, they're obviously interested in you, maybe they can go through the path again and you can get a bit more information, they can get another offer from you, learn more about your company, take part more in what you're offering, showing a greater level of interest. And then make sure whatever system you have set up for this follows up with an automatic email thanking them for going through all that process and maybe giving them a link to share the you know share landing page to their social media networks and get more people in on that. Uh, a link to go back if they happen to lose the offer, they can go back and get it again. Things like that need to be included in that email. And just to summarize this conversion path here, this really works well with helpful content. So we're not talking about you know, download my um, brochure of our list of products here. I mean, certainly you can set it up to do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people, though, aren't willing to do that at the awareness stage. They're doing that at the consideration stage. That's why we're talking about differences in call to action at the beginning. We need to, on a home page, have a call to action for everybody at every buying stage so they can immediately go the direction that they need to. Now, it may not go right to a landing page. It may go to a deeper page within the website, then which has another call to action for a landing page to convert them on this path. So it's thinking through all of that ahead of time. But usually it's going to be the first page and then about the second page into the website that we definitely want to have an opportunity to gather some intelligence about that visitor if they're willing to, willing to offer it. And uh, done, this done well and placed into a um, customer relationship management system um, will then also track all their other activity on the website and uh, certainly then want to encapsulate any um, social media activity they have too so we can start building a relationship with them digitally. So, uh, oh, I think I was just talking about this, location of calls to action. The other place is the blog besides the home page and the service pages. The blog's a great place because it gets so much traffic when done well. If it's a good blog, that's where the majority of the website traffic comes in besides the home page. So we're there to help visitors navigate the website based on their needs and interests, and then of course help them to convert. And it may be multiple times uh, if they keep coming back, if there's something worthwhile to keep coming back to, they will do that. And uh, help continue to self-qualify on the way through. Now the email is how you get them back. We have to get them re-engaged. And so any sort of uh, lead generation website absolutely cannot survive without some sort of email system. Uh, to do this. And uh, a good CRM, like we use, uh, I use HubSpot and Clark Incorporated likes to use Hatchbuck. Uh, we can see when people have opened emails, when they've visited the website, what pages of the website they've visited. So we can understand the content that we're, they're downloading and the level of their activity because that informs us in our sales process situ situationally what's happening with that prospect. Uh, in a webinar recently attended that I really enjoyed with uh, Jill Conrad, who's an excellent saleswoman. Um, she was talking about how today uh, it's not just knowing enough about the industry, that's important, but it's not knowing all about your client's industry, and it's also not all about just understanding who your buyers are in a persona sense, but it's understanding your situation at the moment. And if we can uh, pick up a phone and we know what we've been re they've been reading on our blogs and we can speak very intelligently with them about what's important to them. So that is the last slide. We're going to take some, uh, we're going to stop and look at some websites. You ready? Oh, All right, we're going to come do back it. to that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was our freebies we were going to give away. Um, okay. That's the go-to meeting thing. Here you go. I'm going to let you kick this one off, Andrew. All right, well, here we have a website for Bell Performance. This is an example of a website that's done their conversion path very well. You see, right off, you see the large graphic with providing superior engine performance, and you got two options. Find help for your problems. That's good for like the awareness stage. 
and maybe the consideration stage. But then they also have shop now, which is more for the decision stage. They have a branching path through their site, directing people to one or the other, depending where they fit in. And if you keep scrolling down, then they've got testimonials. They've got a section on how can our products help you. That right there is answering one of the key questions that anyone in the early stages of cycle is going to have. You know, what can you do to help me? People visiting your site, they don't care about what all your company can do unless it's in terms of what it can do for me. And that's why right they ask the question and then answers the question these categories and find your problem. It's all about answering problems that people coming to the site want to have answered. Then you've got featured products and right below that you got download the guide, a content offer. It's what we've been talking about. If you click download the guide that takes you to a landing page like we've discussed. It's got a uh, form there where they can capture information about the lead. We've got information showing you what the content office is going to be about and why it's a good thing to read. I got in here uh, up to go ahead and subscribe to their blog so they can be an ongoing relationship. All great benefit to about performance in tracking who's interested in them. All they had to do was just offer up the free guide. And then they uh, finish out the page with more information about their blog, including a subscription form to the blog and a couple of highlighted articles. Super. Yeah, we both like this a lot. And I think you've just described it very well, Andrew. Very cool. I like how it's also got at the top, shop now, or located dealer. There's a phone number. You know, just they've got all the basics down, but it's funny how many people miss the basics. So then we have here, oh, this is funny. <laughs> the live chat message, I love that. This is good for conversion, actually. I'll come back to the website in just a second, but this chat thing is really smart. Um, certain website that makes a lot of sense, like for the fuel additive website, eh, I don't think a chat's really important. But this is someone who's really trying to execute on some very technical pieces of their business. And uh, if they get hung up on something because they don't know what they're doing, um, getting the, them engaged in chat is a quick way to direct them to what they're looking for and provide the uh, advice they need. And what they've done here really well in the chat is they've personalized who to talk to. They've made it funny names, support guru. Look, you can even rate them, good or bad. But they have a real name and then a funny title. And then he says, save me from Angry Birds monotony. Let me help you. So this is really fun. And uh, I would easily engage with this if I wanted to, which I don't mean to, but I love that. Uh, okay, so, and then, like, here we are, chat now. Oh, this really sticks out very nicely. This, though, is kind of crazy. Lots of stuff going on. And you can see that this right-hand side of the screen stays still, whereas this one moves a whole lot. Uh, and, unfortunately, the menu disappears at the top and on the left-hand side because of it. So, um... But what is good is that you can see we've got some very strong calls to action right here uh, for what I would call really uh, people at the uh, evaluation stage, maybe also in the consideration stage a little bit, but mostly this is down towards the bottom of the funnel. Now over here, though, we're looking at request samples. Now this is a consideration stage, perhaps, uh, whereas the quote is the bottom of the funnel. So what I see missing here is I don't see anything that's going to capture people's interest if they're just aware of their problems or needs. Uh, but um, if you're past that stage where you're really just looking for a good printer that does some specialty printing and you're just out there trying to decide between which ones I want to use, this uh, website I think works really well for that. And do you have anything to add, Andrew? I think you covered it pretty well. It's a very busy website, it's easy to get lost in it. Uh, they have I think, done some things with the large animated banner and stuff to try to lead the eye to help uh, people digest it, but it is a lot of content. You want to make sure people don't get lost, make sure they know where they need to go. Okay, well let's do this. Let's talk about this next website. Now this one's pretty streamlined, it's not as fancy, but it gets to the point pretty quickly and this is one that I helped design. And uh, it's for a consultant, an independent consultant in asset management. 
which uh, I've seen websites by asset management consultants, and they're pretty lousy. I think he's got the best one out there, probably the most thought put into it, too. But you can see that we've got a value statement right here, very clear about who they are and how they help people, which is funny that you can visit many websites, and that's a lost message, but it's, it's very clear right here. And then it says, hey, do you want to discover what we deliver? Now, if, they, if this call to action isn't clicked on, it's easy to read here in four different areas quickly what this manager helps you maximize. Here's a content offer and um, links to uh, blog articles and then some clients. Now there's another call to action down here too for consultation. So we've got the bottom of the funnel uh, decision stage, we've got the awareness stage, and then this is discover we deliver the consideration stage, all located here on the home page. And when we go to look at this content piece, you can see that this has got a slightly different process when it comes to downloading. It's using a yes-no option instead of a form. And if they say yes, then the form is provided for them to click on and download, uh, which is immediately available on the next page. This is not a double opt-in type of approach, which is good to really make sure you've got really super good leads, but bad if you're trying to collect a lot of leads, because a lot of people don't like to double opt-in, uh, which in case you're not familiar with that, it means sign up, go to your email, verify that you actually did sign up, that kind of thing. I would always keep double opt-in for blogs, but for content pieces, this is better. You can see we've got some quotes down here about this consultant and their experience. If they say no, then we offer a secondary option. Uh, say, thank you for checking out the ebook. You know, if, you know, since that's not of interest, here's some other things you might want to consider and take a look at our services or look at our blog articles if you haven't reviewed those. Now, anything can happen here as a secondary option. But we, we want to think about the journey and the buyer. And if they say no to one thing, well, then what's another thing that might interest them instead? Uh, so, um, moving up here or going back to the home. Or I guess I could have clicked this button here. Discover what we deliver. So what we're coming down here is we're looking at services. I'm in the consideration stage, uh, looking for an asset management. I already know what an asset manager is. Some people don't. That might need education with that at the awareness level. But now I'm kind of looking into, well, what do they actually deliver? And here you can see that the services are actually packaged in a way that makes a lot of sense, um, which this particular client never I could explain it verbally, but he's never outlined it like this before. So we had to work through this, even to getting approximate costs for how he delivers his service, because this helps continue qualify the client. You can see it's a minimum of 60 units for this asset manager. He's not looking to help someone with got a problem with a rental down the street. This is for complexes. He works with large ones all around the country. And then you can even learn more when you click on one of these three levels. Uh, gives more specific details and an option to go to other levels or discover how these services are actually delivered. So you can see someone can keep digging down a little deeper and a little deeper each time if they are continuing to want to learn more in their research uh, of this business. Now here's where they actually go through the process of how we actually work with clients. And I'm thinking about changing this up, to be honest. I just thought about this yesterday. I'm going to make this four pages with a menu on the right-hand side so that they can click on each one, and then it all stays above the fold without any scrolling. And they can switch to each stage uh, very quickly. Of course, the call to action down here at the bottom is to get that consultation, which if you could t speak to this for a minute, Andrew, why should we offer a landing page for a consultation? Why can't we just talk about it on one of our regular website pages? Well, if you just talk about it, it's not likely anyone's going to just pick up the phone and dial. People are, generally speaking, rather hesitant to reach out in that way. They're more comfortable usually responding to like a yes, no question in a little form. It seems less intimidating. And then at that point, um, the asset management company or whatever company is doing it can then call back and it takes some of the burden off the visitor kind of lowers the barriers of entry so to speak that they can get to that stage while putting up both less intimidating steps um, something I've also wanted to comment on that um, you've been going through you've been going through from start to finish how this website 
uh, really guides you through various questions. It anticipates the questions you may have and offers things like want to learn more about this, click here. It tells the viewer where to go. You notice there isn't a bunch of navigation, a huge navigation bar at the top, mapping out the entire site, leaving people to figure out, okay, what page do I want? Do I do this one or this one or one of these other half dozen? No, it's taking visitors through a path. The website's doing the navigation work for the visitor, and that is much more effective. What you don't want is you don't want someone to just read to the bottom of your page and be like, okay, now where do I want to go? I don't really know. They'll probably just leave. They're not going to dig deeper, most likely. If you can guide them to kind of a guided tour of your site built into the site, that's much more effective. I love that term, guided tour. That's great. And then with the consultation page, what's wonderful about this, too, just to add from a sales perspective, is it tells people, this is what you can expect when you talk to us. And, and I think people are really, to be very hesitant about a traditional sales experience. They don't want to be sold to. They want a relationship. And they want to know if you can be trusted and what kind of knowledge and experience you have. So a consultation that outlines, when you call me, this is what we're going to talk about, you know, helps set the expectations and lowers the concern about what it means to connect. So you can see right here, they're actually offering um, you know, sound advice on these three areas. Quick fixes for providing relief on a property that's uh, underperforming, uh, biggest issues to resolve in the long haul, and what will take to stabilize a property again. And uh, this consultant's been doing this for so long, he says in like literally a 15-minute conversation with uh, a real estate group, he can tell them the answers to all of this. And they're probably answers, honestly, they already know, but it's <laughs> which is true for all of us that are looking to hire consultants. And having someone else tell us that confirms what really maybe sometimes we don't want to <laughs> believe ourselves, but we know that we need to do something about it. All right, let's do this. Um, let's skip on over. I have a couple more, but let's skip on over to Team Care, and that way Steve uh, can um, head on out if he needs to early. And uh, you can always watch this later because we are recording it. We'll make that available. And um, I tell you what, you want to start off, Andrew? Are you comfortable with that or you want me to do it? Uh, why don't you do it? Okay. What I like about this website is the pictures. These are all real pictures of people in the business that you will meet and shake hands with and talk to as you go through your experience with them. So uh, I like that it's not stock photos, and I just think that that's a great plus. Um, the website in general is pretty menu-driven. That means that people have to go up here and choose or select what they want to look at. And as we described beforehand, ideally on, on a home page, we're going to capture people's interest, you know, with the three different stages of um, their journey. So in general, looking at everything on here, I think the website's got great content. They talk about what it is that they do and how they deliver it. For example, here, the family team care training. Oh, my computer's a little slow. Here we go. Uh, we've got a graphic here showing the five steps and uh, some and a detailed description. And I think this is probably really text heavy, uh, just like on this other page that I showed you. And there are ways to break this up to make it more friendly to the eye. But that's not my first concern by any means with this website. Someone that's serious about getting help for their primary care office is going to read all this. So um, we're going to like some conversion paths thoughts here. Uh, going back to the home page, we've got a nice call to action about listening to uh, the book written by Dr. Anderson who runs this business called The Familiar Physician. You, this is an image and this is a description of a call to action. It's beautiful. The only thing that it doesn't do when you click on it is it takes you to another page where you can actually listen to it. We're not actually collecting any lead information where they're filling out an email address or a name on their form. So actually, it looks to me. Sorry, it looks to me like it's not actually taking on where they can listen to it. It seems to be just general news. I know when I uh, first navigated oh, right. the website, I found that pretty confusing. It was not what was expected. Oh, okay. Oh, because it might probably be in here. And I see that. So we got register to listen here, register to watch this. Oh, okay, cool. Now this is okay, but this redirects to another site. Okay, so that doesn't all count. 
which by the way, Steve, uh, you are welcome to pop in any questions you have there on the chat. Go for that, definitely, as we're talking about your site. Um, now, oh, the blog. Dun, dun, dun. I think the blog is great. It's really good information, well written. Uh, some things to think about, as I mentioned earlier, majority of traffic is going to come through uh, to the website through the blog. And if it's a well-written blog and it's getting that exposure because you know we're adding pages to the website, the website's growing, it's getting uh, SEO uh, ranking. And if people land on this here, this blog page, um, or, or an article, actually, because let me just be correct here, uh, they're going to land on a particular article, not just on that index there. All right, so this is my first exposure to team care. Let's just say, because I've, I've been researching EHRs and this article came up. Uh, the only way that I'm going to learn more about who team care is and how they operate, any other piece of you know interesting news, is if I come up here to the top at the menu. And uh, what we really want is for them to download a piece of content, right? Maybe like a piece of the book that we saw earlier, or another piece of information that helps increase their awareness about the challenges in primary care offices. So, um, okay, over here on the right-hand side, we've got subscribe to our blogs. Yeah, this is all blog-driven. The sidebar is a great way to move people into other parts of the website and to visit a landing page so that we can get, grab some intelligence from them. What would you like to add, Andrew? I've been running out a lot of stuff here. Well, yeah, you had a lot of very good points. It's a very nice looking site. And I got mail and everything they're saying, but it looks like a lot of really good content in there. Um, very nicely done and from a visual standpoint. I think what's really where it's lacking is the guided tour <laughs> type thing I already talk, looked at in a previous example. There's no guidance here. You get to you go through the pages and it's not clearly where to go next. You kind of have that with that sidebar on the home page, but then at least for me it took me somewhere I wasn't really expecting and I got confused and it's still kind of check out some of the news articles there, but I still haven't really explored the website very fully. I haven't really been taken through a path that's going to lead me to wanting to pick up the phone or whatever other action you're wanting people to take. I'm not guided through to that conclusion. You seem to be leaving the visitor to try to find it on their own, and a great many aren't going to find that. Uh, the, uh, like, for example, the webinars that they offer uh, here, is, it's good that it's up here in the menu, so if someone clicks on it, they can read it. But I would love to see on the home page, you know, a big call to action about this webinar opportunity since that's the evaluation stage. And um, I want to know more about the sales process certainly behind uh, when the webinar comes in. I think I understand a little bit of it already. But things like uh, questions like why you're attending are good if you expect people to convert that have never called Team Care before. But if they've already been in touch, it's probably not a necessary question. And I'm always thinking about the less fields that people have to fill out, the better. And um, so we have to think about how are people visiting this landing page that you know could also use a video, could also use some imagery, uh, could also use a testimonial to help increase the likelihood that they're going to sign up, that they're going to register. So it's always a balance, certainly. There's no cut clear-cut answer about how many fields you should have. And if you take one off, you know, it bumps it up 2 to 3% your conversion. You know, that's, that's not clear. But it ties into the bigger picture of the goals, how the traffic's sent there, and uh, so forth. So I think that we've covered quite a bit here. I don't know, Steve, if you have any questions. But you guys are, uh, if you've got any, you can certainly pop them here on the chat. And uh, we've got a few other websites here to look at, too, in the next 20 minutes for other participants. You want to go over to the Stay in Touches website? Yeah, let's do that. Here we go. All right, well, I guess I can go off on this one. So, I'm already do um, 
to me with some of we're in talks with Stay in Touch. We're looking at does she need to redo her website? What can we benefit from what we work and things like that. And so she's familiar with some of what we're talking about here. And just diving down into some more specifics, she's got a lot of content on the home page. And you know, it used to be said in years past that website needs to be the up a lot of content and in many ways that is still true. We've been talking about content offers and getting people educated and stuff like that. But the content needs to be organized and divided in such a way it's easy to browse and digest and to read just what a buyer wants to need wants to read and needs to read. That's why we divide it up according to the buying path and things like that. Right now, the home page has a lot of great information on it, but the majority of Stay in Touch's visitors, I imagine, never read all of it. It's just too much for a website, especially a home page. The home page really should have a means of grabbing quick attention. It could be a graphic or intention-grabbing promise, for example. Um, a quick one of who you are, who you serve, and what you can do for me, the visitor. It needs to be focused on the person visiting your site, not focused on stay in touch so much. Along with that, as we've been talking about, it's cool to have a clear path to follow for each stage where I'm just discovering stay in touch for the first time, or trying to make up my mind about becoming a customer, or if I'm returning comes looking to place a reorder. It's going to be different depending what stage I'm in. For example, we might have for a brand new visitor, uh, page dedicated more in-depth information, like we have on homepage now, but I take them through a path, a guided tour again idea. Like you start on that path, maybe you go through this information, divide it up and easier to read, easier to digest sections that's more relatable to where they are. Well, it's not something to make up their mind, maybe more captivated by content offer targeting them. Uh, for example, maybe explaining how direct mail postcards can fit into the overall strategy. And a returning customer could be more interest, interested in maybe viewing the latest postcard galleries and your radius list search and things like that. Yeah, the, uh, my first impression certainly, oh, uh, coming back here now, uh, was uh, the website is a little dated looking. It's just the way when it was created originally, I think it was done very well. But you know how the internet is these days; people are evolving quickly, and so this uh, shows a little age on it in terms of styling. Um, I was looking at the colors; it's interesting. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, the goal here is to really attract women because the purple color is one that is preferred by women and not at all by men. So um, I'm sure this was already known when they selected it, but I just thought I'd point that out, that that would make a huge difference. If I was a male uh, real estate professional, would how would I feel about this site compared to a competitor site, you know, doing something similar? But um, also moving on, the this process here, it looks very much like a squeeze page, which is a process or a tool often used uh, in internet marketing. Not really for home pages, <laughs> but more as like a landing place to direct very specific traffic to. So uh, conceptually, this is interesting that this is like a squeeze page on a home page. I've never seen that before, and I agree that with uh, Andrew was saying to slim this down, understand where people are in the buyer's journey, and send them the direction they need to. Most importantly, I would want to understand how is the traffic getting to this website and what's the sales process because that makes a big difference. Uh, there is not a blog here. So I'm assuming that the traffic is going to be direct, meaning that somebody already knows about Stay in Touch or already uh, knows about um, the owner of Stay in Touch, uh, Annie, and then they discover this you know, from her business card or something like that. So it's very um, focused right now on this is us and this is great and this is what we do and here's how you can learn more about us. And I would love to see some more help uh, offered to real estate professionals on how they could be better at their job to create that endearment and relationship with them. So, uh, all right, man, we've just got a lot to say, Andrew, i got to tell you. <laughs> Let's go on to <laughs> the next one here, uh, Wellness by Design. Could you uh, kick this one off? I don't think we're on the home page. 
Um, yeah, let me get, get to the home page a second. Um, I'm trying to follow along. I didn't actually have that one up, loading up now. Okay, so here we have a very clean design. You see it's a lot of white space and all very visually pleasing. And immediately I see it's broken up. You have Meet the Coach, Wellness Solutions for You, and Upcoming Events. So I take that as like three different branches that you can go through to navigate through the site. And that's good. It leads people deeper in without just relying on the menu bar. Now I click on, for example, the Meet the Coach, then it, I'm taking a page that does have some good sidebar items. Like then I can go further in with about lean programs, FAQs. You have the newsletter, so it keeps going in to some more pages. But if I try to go any deeper, like you click on about lean programs, it's the same option. So it's kind of like you start on a path, and then it kind of dead ends after a few pages. So never taken really to a call to action or the fill out a landing page form for a content offer or a consultation or anything like that. I get some information about you, but after that's through, as a visitor, I'm not, again, I'm left to my own devices figure out where to go. And you can really never trust the visitor to do what you want them to do when left to their own devices. Yeah, I don't even see the the phone number up here at the top. I think that would be really important. Something like call now, you know, or uh, we're here to help. Please contact us, you know, 800 or whatever the number is. Um, that's important. So we don't have to click on the contact button here. Yeah, I do have the how to get in touch that has the information with the phone number and email address and form, so that's good. But, it's, I mean, put it everywhere. There's no neat reason to have it only on one page. Yeah, it could be at the bottom in the footer too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I like what you were saying that uh, the idea is if someone's really surf surfing uh, or surfing, excuse me, down a page or two into the website, then they're they're interested. They want to learn more, and we really want them to do something. Now, it's got over here these you know sign up for a newsletter, get in touch with me, tell your friends. Um, people don't like newsletters. Uh, how to get in touch with me, well, what does that mean when I get in touch with you? You know, so we talked about that landing page experience, which could be right here, honestly. Like, this is what happens when you get in touch with me. This is how I can help you. You know, even just adding a description of that here would be helpful. Um, and if it's, if it's a newsletter, a, a landing page, let me see what this looks like. Okay, what, why do I need the wellness newsletter? Who is it for? How is it going to help? Because we've talked about helping different people up there. Um, you know, maybe there are a couple of copies of one. If it's a really good newsletter that I could see and be like, yeah, I'd like to see those more often, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and maybe less information to fill out. I think this is a lot for a newsletter. Yeah, that's going to inhibit people signing up right there just because why do they need my address? Right? Unless you're mailing it to them, literally. I'm just assuming it's an email list. But if it's a mailing list, then that needs to be clarified. <laughs> yeah, and if it is a mailed one, uh, why do you need the email address? It's a bit of a When I fill that out, I don't know to watch my inbox or watch my post box. <laughs> there you go. But I do like how there's a nice rotating banner. That's good. Let me see. I'm trying to click on here. Okay, it's just really slow. Prime time help. Yeah. Okay, so this is a bit of a call to action right down here, which is good. It's pretty small. But a big picture, let's say, of uh, the consultant Sherry right here and, you know, a big smile and, you know, I'd love to connect with you, that kind of thing, you know, and the phone numbers right there, that would be a stronger call to action than just this line of text. So I like the happy people here. I've noticed that there's a lot of Pinterest stuff going on. I'm not sure why on the home page when I go to click something like this right here, it pops up. I think it's a little funny, but that's just some coding stuff to work on. Okay, so uh, we've got a few more minutes here to look at a few more websites. What I'd love to point out here is a website that does a great job with um, offer, considering the buyer's journey, but it does have some design challenges. What do you think, Andrew? Well, I think there's uh, 
several pros and cons to the way they've done their web page here uh, from a design standpoint. The pictures are wonderful. You see that rotating side of uh, sideshow pictures. They're really showing, so it speaks to the visitor's emotions at the moment. If you're going to a expert on divorce mediation and caring divorce support, you're probably not in a very good place emotionally. And showing this really shows like a life after divorce, a family life after divorce, and can help to give peace of mind and associate good feelings with mainline family law centers. So that's a very good decision from a design standpoint. And within the banners you have, you see there, um, decide your own, depending on future and tunes, learn more or schedule a consultation. They have a branching system there where you can find out more about them if maybe you're just exploring, so discovering, or if you're closer to a decision, you can go ahead and go for the consultation. It's speaking to different audiences depending on where they are. So the banner is really good. The rest of the page is where it starts to fall apart, particularly in terms of their text treatment. If you go back to the home page, they've got it broken up in an odd way, a lot of centered type, a lot of uh, bold type without anything um, really give contrast. It makes it harder to read, harder to skim particularly, and doesn't project as much of a professional image as the pictures do. Now, um, and they put a lot into, see on the side they've got down free guide, down report, down checklist. So they've done a lot with their call to actions on the left of offering you plenty to look at, but it all kind of blends together between the sidebar and the main page. You know, everything's big, everything's bold, and I just I just kind of glossed over it. And a lot of that can be fixed with just some better typography, really. Yeah. I would say that this website hits it with content. They're doing awesome. They understand the buyer's journey. Um, it's looking outdated. Uh, hopefully, they're working on a new website. If they're just working on a new website, they're going to do the same thing, though, the same type of content. They just make it more modern looking, then it would be a very powerful uh, website. So, um, cool. Well, I tell you what, we're going to look at one more, and then I think we're going to call this a wrap because we have covered a lot of great information and I'm sure people are ready to put it to use. Uh, so the last one here is an e-commerce based site and this is actually B2C but I just like to bring this up because um, if you're thinking about how does conversion work for e-commerce, you know, is it just getting them to buy products? It's not. It's changing how e-commerce works today and it's about building a relationship with our customers for the long term. Now with uh, crutches situation here, if someone has an injury, um, you know, hopefully they will not need this business for the rest of their life. That would be horrible. Uh, but what I do like that they do to build a relationship with someone who's going through what is often a struggle in a physical sense is uh, offering pieces of content down here to help them recover. This means like, hey, we really care. We're not just here to sell you colorful boots, you know, or benches or spray nozzles. We're here to actually help you be part be part of your recovery process and help you make wise decisions um, with uh, guides. And so uh, that's what I like about that. And then, of course, they do a great job about making sure that there's a satisfaction guarantee, that they offer free shipping. These are just, you, you can't do an e-commerce thing anymore without these two options. And, of course, they make that really clear up here, too, uh, free shipping and, and uh I like how they also point out there's the phone number to call to contact. They've got a live chat. It doesn't pop up. Oops. I just clicked on it. But they really hit the mark on a lot of important things. What would you like to add, Andrea? Well, from a design standpoint, I like what they've done. If you scroll down the page, you can kind of see it's a stripe design. They have uh, some products. They have satisfaction guarantee, fast shipping. They have some more products of a different category. And they got testimonials, and they got maybe a different category. They space it out, and things are divided up into discrete chunks that they can fit a lot of information in. Above these uh, stripe scroll sideways to show more information, but it's not overwhelming. And I'm my what we we're talking about with the Stay in Touch website, how it's just a whole lot of text, not really broken up. Like who's going to read through all that? 
here they've got a lot of content that they've broken up in a very nice, easy to digest way. You never see more than a paragraph two at a time, but by the time you read through all of it, you may have gone through, you know, 10, 12 paragraphs or so, but you don't even realize it because it's been broken up so nicely and laid out in a friendly, easy to navigate manner. Cool. All right. Well, for folks that have uh, attended this session um, and anybody else watching this video, we want you to know that we've got a couple of resources you are welcome to access on our website. So on the Relaunch You website, we have 30 greatest lead generation tips, tricks, and ideas that really encapsulates a lot about what we've talked today. And then a special piece of content from the Clark Corp company. Uh, what do you have there, Andrew? Well, we have an ebook there. We titled it "So You Need a Website: What to Do First. And this is uh, a wonderful resource for anyone who is looking to maybe redo their website, whether it's redesign or if you don't have a good website, and you want to like start over. You know, your old system doesn't fill your needs. What system do I need? Do you want um, like a website in a box, like something like Wix or Squarespace? Do you want to just uh, go to Theme Forest, somewhere like that, buy a template and set up, say, WordPress installation? Should you hire a professional to uh, do custom developer website? This ebook goes through all those options and more and talks about what the processes are and what the pros and cons are of each and gives some idea of which one would make best suit your situation because every website's a little different. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, I hope everybody found this enjoyable. I know that Andrew and I really uh, found this session fun. We love talking about what we do professionally. And I look forward to seeing folks on the next webinar. Have a great day.